I've been doing a series of videos about my favorite things to use in the kitchen. I have two previous videos that I've already completed. I will link to those. But today I'm going to talk about some of my favorite utensils. As with most things in my kitchen, a lot of my utensils are old and they have kind of a sentimental meaning to me. I like to store some of my, uh, the ones that I use really frequently, I store them in these pitchers and have them close to the stove. So I'm going to start right there. When me and Matt was first married so long ago, uh, almost going on 30 years, someone got us this set of like these big silver spoons and ladles. I don't use the ladle as much, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but those spoons I've used pretty much, I mean, I, literally almost every day since we were first married, so those are really, really great ones. And they're nothing special. They probably come from Walmart or something like that. More recently, Granny, um, I think it was either at Christmas, it wasn't at Christmas, it was, at, I guess, at Thanksgiving when everyone come up to eat. She always brings green beans. Granny's green beans are the best. She grows them and cans them, and then just she just has, I cook my, I do the same thing and can and then cook mine, but hers are always better somehow. Anyway, but she brought, when she brought the beans in, they had this spoon in them, and she said, I want you to keep that spoon. It's so nice, I bought me one, and I bought you one too, so now I have an extra one. Of course, I have the potato masher, and when Matt and I was first married, even then, my whole life, I've been attracted to old things. That's just the, the kind of person that I am. I love old things. So I don't remember if this was one that Granny gave me or someone else, but it's just one of those old wooden handled utensils, so I use that for my potato masher. Now, this is the uh, ladle that I really love and that I use more often. It's smaller than that large one. It kind of just has a really good feel. It has like a fake wood. It's not real wood. Fake wood. And it has a little spout on one side so it makes it perfect for doing jellies or pickles or anything like that. And this was my Uncle Woodrow's. And when I was growing up, he was on Granny's, he was Granny's brother-in-law, so on Granny's side. When I was growing up and I would go to visit my Granny Gazzy, her husband, my grandfather, Charlie, he died when Granny was pregnant with me, so I never knew him. But my Uncle Woodrow and his wife, Faye, Granny's sister, they were always at Granny Gazzy's. So he was, Woodrow was kind of like the alternate papaw or whatever you would, you know, kind of the grandfather figure at that house. And after he passed away, his daughter, Mary, shared a few things with me, and this was one of them. So I just love it. Every time I, I use it, I almost feel like I'm... Uh, kind of channeling Woodrow and Faye, but especially Woodrow, and I know he'd be pleased that I'm putting up food for my family because he loved to do that kind of stuff too. This is, I don't remember where this come from, just tongs, but I like these because they're shorter. They're kind of the shorter ones. I have some longer ones too. I've had them forever too. I have the little thing that will can slide off or lock it in place, and this one has the, kind of goes in and out. But I use these a lot for all kinds of things. I really love tongs. And when I'm canning, especially, I, I use them for stuff every day. But when I'm canning, I especially love them. You know, uh, when you're putting your taps, trying to put your tap on, they have the little magnetized thing that all canning kits come with. I somehow can't use that. I'm just not coordinated again uh, enough to use it. I end up putting the magnet somewhere else or getting it turned upside down. But I, So I prefer to use tongs for my canning. So I really... Really love both of those. And I've had them for ages. This is something that I get asked about all the time in my videos, in my cooking videos, is this little whisk. It's my favorite. It's small. It's really the only whisk I use. Kind of has this funny shape that'll get in the corners of the pots or whatever you're doing. Uh, and the little spring thing will actually come all the way off if you wanted to take it off. And it is made by Rada, 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 ever how you say it. People, I've heard people say it all different ways. We say Rada, but R-A-D-A. -A. And you can find them online. They're pretty inexpensive, but they're really nice. They sponsored some of my blog posts years ago, and so they gifted me with this. And I still use it, and it's been many years, and it's one of my, one of my favorite tools. And that's why you often see it show up in the videos. I love spatulas like this, the silicone, that can take a lot of heat. And I especially like these two. I've not had these that long, maybe a year, because they're all one piece. A lot of the older ones I had, uh, ones I've used in the past, were two pieces. And you know what happens around that edge? Gunk would get in there. And, you know, it just never seemed very sanitary or 
um, thing. I was always afraid of mold or something growing. So these, since they're all one piece, I especially love them. And probably my favorite is the little one. I just like small things, maybe because I have small hands. But I like, I like the feel of both of those. Now I'm going to put this back over here where it goes. Now for this next one, I kind of have all my wooden utensils in it. We use them a lot because we uh, love, we like to use them, but we have cast iron and often people will tell you you should use wood on cast iron, so that's another reason. But they are just various ones, different ones. Some of them come from the, uh, the folk school where we live close by. I think that one did. That was a gift from uh, someone that took one of my classes one time. And these others, these kind of light colored ones, I really think are beautiful. And they were gifted by to me by a subscriber, Shane, also with my bowl that a lot of people ask about. And they were made by Pam Melton, and they are just like a work of art. They are just beautiful, beautiful. So I haven't got to use, there's one, I've been using this one a lot. You can kind of tell the difference in them. But my favorite uh, wooden utensils of all, I especially like these that have the flat, that are just flat. Those are the ones I kind of gravitate towards. And that one's probably, there's no telling where that one come from, probably just some more cheap. But I really like those flat ones. That was, that's another one that's kind of flat that I really like. So we use those a lot. And Matt takes care of our wooden utensils when they get kind of dried out looking or kind of dull. He will put a layer of food grade mineral oil on them and kind of really work it in. And then they're good for months after that. So you don't have to do that very often, but he takes care of that for us. Another little thing that come from Pam and um, generosity of Shane is this little honey. And I've never had one of these, but boy, I love that. It works so well to get out your honey. So I really am enjoying that one, even though it's a new one. Of course, you got to have just the old metal spatulas. And these are all from the time me and Matt were married. You can tell this one's been laid on a heat stove eye, hot stove eye, and there's melted places really melted on the front. I'm sure I'm the one that done that. And then these are just wooden handle, just old cheap ones. But somehow when you use utensils like that, they just come, become kind of like your old friends after you've used them for so many years. So those are my, I use those all the time. I, when we first were married, we had someone got us an electric can opener. And for many years, it was right over here under the cabinet. It's where it was, you know, one of those that attached to the cabinet. And we used it. I used it all any time I opened a can. That's what I used. But it quit working. And after it quit working, I told Matt, you know, I don't really want another one because it kind of always gets goopy and it's just hard to clean and in the way. So I went back to one of my old, just the old standby, and that's what I used to open all my all my. Uh, cans. I know they make some that are better than this for people that kind of have a hard time doing that motion, so you could look for those definitely, but I use that a lot. Another thing that's kind of fairly new, all the years that I've iced cakes and put frosting on cakes, now I'm not an expert icer or froster, I don't make fancy cakes or anything like that, but I always just used a knife or maybe one of those spatulas, and it just really wasn't the best best thing. And sometimes, I think I just was in, maybe even in Walmart one day, and I just happened to glance at this. I can't remember what I was looking for. And it was like offset spatula to do to ice cakes. And it was like less than $5. I don't even remember, a dollar, $2 or something, because it's just cheap. And I thought, uh, you know, that's, I should... I should get that and just try it and see if it is any easier. Well, yeah, it's a lot easier. <laughs> I should have had one of those for many years, but I, but I didn't. One of the things I use a lot, this is what I use as a biscuit cutter. It's actually a chopper. I use it for that too, sometimes to chop up cabbage, to chop up tomatoes, but I also use it for, a, for my biscuit cutter. So that's what I use to cut out biscuits. So that gets a lot of use. I have several different sizes of little of sieves 
and I use them. Uh, probably the main one, if you've watched my videos, you see me use a lot. It's larger than this, but this little one is so handy when you just want to do something really small that you just need to drain, whether it's tea or maybe getting the juice out of a lemon, something like that. It's just so handy, so I find myself using it a lot. Another great use for it is to put powdered sugar on it, and then when you tap and you can like make them, you know, cover something with powdered sugar, it's really easy because it's so small. So I use that one a lot. Another thing I use often in the kitchen is a ruler. Now I could probably have a better ruler than this one. This is one of those, I don't even know what you call this. Uh, I, the girls both had one. There used to be two of them. So I think it was probably they used it in either geometry or physics, something in school, because they wouldn't have just had them. And when it come time to get rid of them, I said, well, no, I need one for my kitchen, so I'll keep it. So um, it's funny that it's one that the girls used in high school, but I use it now in the kitchen. And another thing like that kind of that you don't necessarily think about being used in the kitchen is scissors. I love to use scissors in the kitchen. This is my dedicated pair from cutting up uh, greens or something like that. To, I use these to cut pizza with a lot of time just because I think it's simpler than using the pizza roller, pizza cutter. So lots of uses for scissors and this is my dedicated pair. Another thing with sentimental value, kind of going back to the can opener, this was also Woodrow's, uh, and it's, I use it, I don't use it as the bottle opener, and I don't use it as the corkscrew, it's just an old white one, but I use this part of it to like when I'm doing evaporated milk or getting off a cannon lid, something like that, I use that a lot. I love vegetable peelers. Uh, even though I didn't grow up in a house that had vegetable peelers, Granny never used them when I was growing up. I think she might use them now, but she didn't grow up. I didn't grow up using them. And then uh, once I actually used them on something, I thought, hey, that's really nice. So I've had uh, several over the years. This is my most recent ones, but I use vegetable peelers a lot. Another thing that's kind of a more recent thing that I, that I bought is a digital thermometer. I, for many years, Miss Cindy gifted me years and years ago with a candy thermometer, like a, you know, the big metal ones you see, and I used that one forever. I used it to make, I make pralines every Christmas. I used it when I make yogurt. I make yogurt, different things like that, and it worked great. And then one year, I was trying to do my pralines, and it was like I just could not get them to work. I just could not. And like, I, I mean, I was just getting really frustrated. They just wouldn't turn out. And I think I like scraped them up and boiled them again. And it, I was just like, how do, how do I not remember pralines being this hard to make? It's only been since the last, I only make them at Christmas, the last Christmas, you know. And I just had a terrible time. And then after I went, I was just frustrated by the whole thing, even though I've made them for years. And then after it was all over, I started thinking about it. And I thought, I wonder if my thermometer is bad. I wonder if that's what it is. So I borrowed, I think I borrowed Miss Sandy's and then made another batch and they were fine. So then I realized it was that thermometer had finally went bad after all those years of use. So when I went to buy one, then I thought, well, I could try out one of those digital ones and see if it made things any easier. Because if you, you know, sometimes when you've got boiling candy, it's hard to kind of see the, the red rising up. So I did buy this one. It's, it's just a cheap one. It's, I'm sure you could get a nicer one than this. And um, it worked like a charm. And it's so much easier than trying to watch the... And, and when you're stirring with the pralines and you've got the big metal one, you keep hitting it and it's just awkward. So this, this really worked great. Uh, and another thing that I probably would have been better off having one years ago, but I just didn't. When it comes to cutting up butter or lard or something in flour, this is my... Um, pastry cutter that I use and I had I had some cheap ones over the years this one I was trying to see if I could see the brand I think it's OMO OXO OXO maybe I had cheap ones and I after a while when you just can you're pushing and pushing those the tines here begin to bend and it just gets wonky and I love to look at yards. I love to go to yard sales, but I love to look for stuff like this because sometimes you can find really nice stuff for cheap. So I remember, I don't remember how to get there, but I remember what the house looked like over in Black Mountain when Miss Cindy still lived there. I bought this at a yard sale and I think I paid 10 cents for it. And then all these years later, I've been using it and it's still as sturdy as it was that first time I used it because it's a really nice one. I use measuring cups a lot as anyone in the 
that bakes or cooks in any way, does recipes, uh, will often use. Now, when I was growing up, Granny had those, do you remember them, the Tupperware ones that like different colors? I think hers, I don't remember if hers was green or yellow, and they fit together. That's the ones I grew up using. And after Matt and I was married, I had just some cheap plastic white ones and probably some other ones, but I remember the white ones good because I think there's one of them still around here somewhere. And then, you know, the like the writing on them wears off and you can't really tell what size it is. Well, you, you know, you could tell which one's the biggest one, which one's the cup or which one's the smallest. But a few years back, uh, Matt got me these stainless steel ones for Christmas one year. And I was very excited. I just love them. So I still love them. Now, when it comes to knives, my favorite knives to use are the, they're kind of on a block back there behind me, but are Old Hickory. It's an Old Hickory set that Matt got. They, they sharpen well. I can't sharpen them. Matt sharpens them, but they just have a great feel to them. All of them do. So those are my favorite, favorite knives to use. But when I got rid of my previous set, I did keep one, I like this serrated knife for breads and things like that. So, and it's a good size. It's not too big. So I like that one a lot. Two other knives that I use a lot are the same as the whisk from the Rada, Rada, every how you say it, people. And these are the knives I grew up with, especially this one, paring knives from Granny. She has two or three of these that she's used for so many years and Pat sharpened for so long that they're really short. They're just about that long, just from all the years of sharpening. So I use these a lot, both of these. This one, if you've ever seen one like that, has these little edges. It's not really serrated. I guess it is serrated, but the, the little edges are way wider than like the one I showed you for bread. And this is called a tomato knife. And it slices a tomato so well and also works really well on other, you think of other soft stuff like peaches, mangoes, those kind of things. So I use, I use those a lot. And again, they come from uh, R-A-D-A, Rada. You can find those. And they gifted me these years ago when they were sponsoring my blog. And I still use them, still been using them. This is a little scoop that I use a lot, and I can't really remember where it come from, but I have two of them. I don't know if it's, Miss Cindy knows I love old stuff, if it's something that she picked up somewhere, or I might have picked up at a yard sale, but I'm thinking maybe Miss Cindy, but it says on here, shortening an ice cream spoon, and it's really sturdy. I don't really use it for ice cream, but I use it as a scoop for all kinds of things, especially like, um, thinking of like oven potatoes or roasted squash, anything I roast in the oven, I use this. So that gets a lot of use and I really like it. There are two other knives that I use. I don't use as often. Let me take them out of the, but they are fillet knives. So they are very sharp and very kind of dangerous. So I don't use them a lot the small one and the big one. And I, when I do use them, I use the big one mostly. And these were, I, Pap, when I was growing up, he had a knife exactly like this, and he kept, I remember, so that it's away from people so they wouldn't hurt themselves on it. And he kept it uh, in a high cabinet, not near the knife, slid back in there. Of course, once we were grown, by that point, we all knew where they were at. But um, that, so every time I see it, it reminds me of Pap. But it's a great knife for meats, and especially for filleting fish. Now, a lot of you, if you read The Blind Pig and the Acorn, you probably already know this about me, but if you don't, you believe that I used to fillet fish for a living. <laughs> I worked at Lake Logan in Haywood County, and at that time, it was owned by Champion International. It was a meeting facility, so people would come there to meet but in their, and stay there, stay on the premises, and then in their spare time, in between their meetings, they could fish at the lake. They could go, they had a, uh, not a golfing, not a golf course, but a putting range. They could do that. Uh, they had a Boojum's cave, so they could go there for entertainment, different things like that. But I worked in the boathouse, in the fishing, where they could come fish. So that was issuing people a fishing license, giving them a rowboat, giving them a fishing pole, helping them with their bait, all those kind of things. And then when they returned in, hopefully they had fish. And we would process the fish. We would either fillet or gut, whichever they preferred. We would tape them up in a cooler, pack them with ice, freeze them, and then send them with them when they left. So, and it was, um, 
I never thought that I would do a job like that, but it was a beautiful place. And at the time, I was young and silly and complained about stuff. But looking back, it was a really great job. It really was. It really was. But it taught me to fillet fish like an expert. I'm, I, of course, I'm not doing it every day these days. But these are the kind of knives that we would use as the same thing. So those are great for filleting fish. This is a, a great little tool that I, I only learned about probably in the last six or seven years, but I use it a lot in the summertime when the corn comes in, roasting ears. This is a to get a corn cutter, so you use it instead of a lot of people like Granny would just use a knife, and I do that sometimes, but this makes it really easy and more, um, I guess, safer because your hands are not as in the way. You can kind of get a better grip and this kind of plastic prevents your hands from getting in the area where the knife would be, but it's got those sharp teeth, so that's for corn, and I use that a lot. And this one comes from Pampered Chef. A um, dear friend, Suzanne, used to sell Pampered Chef, and I bought it from her. One thing that I think is really handy in the kitchen is little brushes, little kind of stiff, bristled brushes. And I like these. This one's, I've had this one forever. I use it to uh, shut corn to get the silks off. And I like that it's kind of got this, the handle, how it curves. It kind of just makes it easier to get in there and hold on than if it was straight. It makes it, I like that. And then I have a little one that I use a lot, whether it's just scrubbing something up or scrubbing, um, doing like shucking corn, those kind of things. I think those are very handy in the kitchen. I have a grater, like a box grater. Um, probably had it since me and Matt was first married, and I use it for everything from slaw to cheese or whatever but this little small one just a handheld one comes in very handy when you're just like maybe you just want to do a little bit of cheese or you just want to do a, something small so I don't you don't have to get out the big box cutter if you're just like going to put some cheese over top of something and grate it right onto the plate or right onto the um, whatever you're cooking or maybe you're eating a taco or something and you're just putting it right on top so that that's very handy and I use that very often so the last two things I'll share with you, I love to bake, and so it's just my rolling pins. This is just a basic one that I can't have no memory of where it come from. Had it forever, and I use it a lot. Then I have this little one that's so wonderful. So Ed Ammons, dear friend, he carved this for me out of one piece. Isn't that amazing? And you'd be surprised. Like, I think he, when he made it, he may have thought that I just thought would think it was cute and kind of set it to the side. But I use it. I've used it. When you're making something small, like little, uh, maybe if you're rolling out for cookies or even my little hand pies that I make, I use it very often. So that's another one that I really like. Sometimes this one's just too big to get in the, it just won't get in the right place. Or maybe you've got a bunch of, if you're like me, you've got a bunch of stuff spread out. So when that happens, I really enjoy using this little bitty one. So I hope you enjoyed seeing some of my favorite utensils that I use to, every day when I'm making food to feed my family here in the mountains of Appalachia. I hope you'll leave a comment and share some of your favorite utensils with me. And as always, I hope you'll continue to drop back by often and help me celebrate Appalachia.